Hi everyone, welcome to the Snap Fingers TV. So Snap Fingers focus on decrypting the integrated communication of the crypto world. We enjoy deep partnership uh, with developer communities, uh, business elite, key media, and financial institutions who have great insight and experiences in blockchain and fintech. Uh, today, we are really, really excited to have Yun Shu Kang. The founder and CTO of Standard Protocol here to talk about the project and I mean everything they are right now building. Hi Khan, could you please introduce a bit about yourself? So I was like a open source contributor to like many open source projects, uh, but I started my blockchain career by contributing to Viper, which was the Python language in Ethereum. Uh, I kind of enjoyed doing that and I wanted to uh, get into more stuff re related to blockchains and I started to make one in JavaScript and I've been contributing to other open source projects, kind of got a job uh, while doing a hackathon and then yeah I came up to realize that there are some problems regarding the algorithmic stable coins across this blockchain ecosystem and I wanted to solve this uh, problem so i just made this standard protocol that's cool i heard you also mentioned about standard protocol which is the project you are right now building would you like to share a little bit more about standard protocol what is this product protocol doing and what kind of like current market problem you guys are trying to solve so standard protocol try to solve this problems regarding the algorithm with stable coins so Algorithm stable coins, well, they have an algorithm to rebase supply of the stable coins and then they distribute using like a seniority share or something. But uh, they automatically do the process smoothly uh, in, in, in expansionary cases, but in contractionary cases, they actually provide some contradiction where people who got the stable coin in the expansionary cases have to give up their ownerships. So in common sense, it just does not make sense because finders are keepers. I mean, in fiat money ecosystem, they use like taxes to bring those monies back to their governance system to recover the its prices, prices and values. But really like those algorithmic stable coins does not have like a valid method to uh, bring those assets when they're uh, stable coin is quite, quite depreciated to the to the market. So um, I wanted to solve this by just taking a risk at first by collateralizing, over collateralizing the other assets from the other ecosystem and make a, more opportunities for having a stable coin to provide the real algorithmic stable coin ecosystem. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. We know that the trend of algorithmic stable coins have completely been very popular since, I mean, starting with Ample Fourth in 2020, right? Then, as you mentioned, a lot of problems still there, like uh, how to maintain and how to how to make every like mechanism at this stable stable like. Uh, I yeah. mean, like each of the project aim to like stable the the dollar. I mean, like still stable their uh, stable coin at uh, one dollar, but it's it's actually very hard. This is actually the point and also the problem. What is the difference? Like uh, standard protocol can actually solve this kind of problem, and what is the mechanism? Like uh, we know there are actually three types of the token, like a bond and bank and like stable coin. Then like uh would you mind to share more detail about like the mechanism like and how you guys what is the difference like you guys actually can solve the problem those algorithm stable coins has come up with some three token systems to recover the prices uh for like in contractionary and expansionary cases but uh but the problem of them is that they have stable coins which is not backed by any values at all so even though uh they are not pegged to one dollar and then say that hey we don't really care about this like uh, pegging to one dollar because just one stable coin equals their <laughs> one stable coin but in those cases they haven't really came up with the valid way of recovering the value of its their stable coins so basically their tokens are now quite like depreciating because of the uh, invalid strategy in contractionary cases. But the huge difference about standard protocol is that although we use three token systems, every token has its separate use cases 
and it has a different situations to use it. So for Meter, it's just a stable coin, which is collateralized uh, by other collaterals, has a backed up values, and it has used for in both cases in bear run or bull run. In Leader, uh, this is like a liquidity provider token from a Uniswap where people can claim their ownership of their liquidity provision to the pools in the RE standard ecosystem and our standard token is the governance which governs all those cdps for uh, meter generations or it could be a new asset declaration to uh, collateralize and also other uh, metrics such as changing some transaction fees or other things regarding the on-chain upgrade of our standard blockchain. That's pretty much the difference between the previous algorithmic stable coins, I guess. That's really interesting. So I'm also wondering, like, uh, who are those people actually need to use stable coin? I mean, protocol, because uh, we have been heard a lot of people actually writing about the article, right, uh, to mention that uh, stable coin or algorithmic uh, Stablecoin are actually kind of like printing money machine, something like that. So I'm just wondering, like, what is your view on the uh, algorithmic uh, Stablecoin? And also, what are the product market fit for the product itself? And also, who are those target audience you guys actually aim to launch the product? In my personal opinion, I 100% agree with those people that algorithmic stablecoin is money printing, definitely. Probably uh, the only way to get the benefit from them is that to apply for like a private sale for their initial dis distribution and that wait for the tokens to, token price to go up because ape, apes will come and then start aping and then sell it off when that time comes. So um, yeah, it's totally money printer right now and it does not have a valid strategy to recover its price other other than just sacrificing the ownership of the stable coin, which is uh, overproduced from money printing. To solve that, uh, we apply collateralization, over collateralization, I mean. We have uh, algorithms which adjust the supply based on the total demand in the market with the ratio equation of the price of the stable coin in the market multiplied by the circulating supply which was generated from the vault is has to equal to the next supply next total supply with the price of one dollar we use this ratio uh, equations to adjust the total supply of the stable coin to be in the market and if the diminishing amount actually cannot be satisfied with the reserve supply of the vault, then we, the vault is kind of closed and nobody cannot generate the stable coins until the price is recovered. So those kind of strategy is kind of not, now it's used. And also just providing a collateralization also provides some more security to the stable coin prices. Even though when the stable coin price goes out of the $1 pack, there's still benefit by doing it, applying a collateralization just like MakerDAO when the MakerDAO's stablecoin die price was actually lower than $1. People made the CDP before then could actually pay off uh, CDP a lot faster due to the decreasing uh, price of die, uh, look like smaller than one. And also when the die price was higher, people could generate more value by just making a CDP. So those two kind of benefits still comes to the standard, but we just wanted to add extra uh, security on pegging this price to $1. So we kind of applied the algorithm only to that kind of situation. So maybe let's talk about the investor and also some of the partner you guys have behind uh, your project. So uh, would you mind to share more about uh, the investor right now? help you guys at the early stage to build this product and also uh, who are those like uh, partner you guys have right now so for the investments i think we're pretty much i think we were kind of like a decentralized system where we just want to solve the problems so while there are a lot of investors that we help to build our projects i mean we're not affected by those investments uh, as well just we just build what we want to build but we kind of focus on partnership between other company other blockchain companies so we actually uh, let other blockchain startup founders to invest in us so that we can have a valid partnership so far uh, we're kind of discussing the partnership with Unori and Konami also uh, Plasm I kind of have made many friends by just contributing to the open source ecosystem so 
um, pretty much having a tight connection between them. Yeah, I mean, also I'm a Tendermint fellow from Cosmos. So Cosmos has been building the IBC module. So we're willing to test it out in our ecosystem as well. So there are many friends who wants to build this together with our projects. One of the interesting uh, partnership that we're trying to have is that we're trying to integrate private banks CVDC into our stablecoin ecosystem as well. So, I mean, we provide this uh, decentralized stablecoins, but we cannot always guarantee that this will stay as like a one dollar pack upon its like development or like some more patches could actually create a problem. So actually we are trying to build some Fiat bridge regarding the uh, CBDC with the private banks. And one of the bank called Jinko Bank is our kind of collaborating together to bring those fiat assets, Korean one, to our standard ecosystem as like a native currency. So next question, I, I want to maybe know more about the product progress. So would you mind to share more about the plan? I mean, like uh, the standard protocol uh, roadmap uh, for 2021. And when are you guys are planning to launch the product? And also, what is the current status for Standard Protocol? For the current status, uh, we have this Substrate implementation to test it out right now. Uh, we have completely integrated ORML uh, X tokens module made by Akala. Enables Parachain to send those Parachain assets across this Polkadot ecosystem. We have simply integrated that and we'll try to test it out. This week, we're trying to launch an IDO so that people could receive the ERC-20 allocation so that they can migrate to Kusama Parachain once we build that. And then once the Parachain is built, they're going to keep those balances in. When the Polkadot Parachain is made, then we'll pretty much move those balances from Kusama Parachain to the Polkadot so that those who bought the ERC-20 could have both tokens from Kusama and Polkadot. So that's pretty much our whole launch strategy. And after that, we'll we're pretty much considering on building this implementation on Cosmos 2 by moving those standard assets to the bridge using an IBC and also CBDC will be integrated after the launch. Mm, talking about the CBDC, so actually that yeah, uh, I, I have a question in my mind. What's your opinion like the, about the future of the stablecoin market, no matter it's algorithmic or not? But just like for stablecoin itself, will it be truly decentralized stablecoin? Will be the trend in the future, or everyone will do something like CBDC or private bank uh, mechanism? I think we're in kind of transition of moving this considering stablecoin as like the money. We can eventually uh, standard is eventually building a stablecoin which uh, soft packs into the one dollar price and. We're kind of also thinking that what if a dollar is not worth it in the end? Because we see so many dollars are printing out like this year. Like we might see dollars depreciation. Then we might have to think about pegging into other stable coins in the fiat ecosystem. But I think there should be more usage on the stable coin in the next years. And not just having like a stable value, but having like a financial opportunity related to the stable coin will matter in the next two next two years, I think. So like for example, in standard, you could use uh meter or stable coin to not only enable leverage trading but also use it as like a arbitrage opportunity where people can buy those liquidated collaterals in a cheaper price and also we're trying to extend that use case of our stable coin into more cases such as using it for commerce or nfts or so that those people who have our stable coins can actually use it in much more uh, various ways than the fiat or the crypto. That's our goal to grow our stable coins. I see. Then last question from my end is uh, if anyone, I mean like no matter community or like developer who want to contribute to standard protocol ecosystem, how they can reach out to you guys? Well, you can simply send an email at contact at standard.tech. Actually, uh, one of the companies has actually reached out and it's really interesting to see them. Uh, one of the companies were like Parsec, which provides the data and information for each account. We actually need those people to 
monitor the liquidations, the close uh, collateral debt positions as well. So it will be really interesting to see some more kind of collaborations between them. And also uh, we're kind of waiting for other projects to collaborate. I mean, as from open source contributor background, I'm totally open for collaboration and I'm, I'm kind of excited to have more collaboration in, in the next few years. And we have all these like uh, protocol development uh, allocations for those who wants to partner with. So just don't be afraid to reach out to us. Just send me an email, then we'll probably get back to you as quickly as possible. But like this week, we're preparing for an IDO, so we might be busy to responded to you all right yeah sure and before i let you go so you mentioned about ideal <laughs> so uh do you have any date or any i mean like a system you are going to have ideal in mind can maybe can share with us so for the ideal uh it's going to be april 27th mm -hmm. and uh we're kind of trying to pick up the whitelist so we're watching people who submit memes and those quizzes we're grading them and we're also watching memes to see which ones are better and all that <laughs> it's it's kind of, it's kind of fun right? it's really fun <laughs> but uh like really uh so many people have uh submitted the forms i really appreciate it and i'm pretty sure it's over now six thousand so which is why we're so busy <laughs> picking up those people right now. Um, and yeah, it's really good to see. And IDEO is coming at April 27th. Okay. So uh, please stay tuned. Uh, we'll deliver the news when, it, when the time comes. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so that's pretty much uh, for the interview today. And it's really glad to have you here today. Yeah. Oh, thank you for having me.